Dear students, now I'll introduce you to Protein Data Bank. So Protein Data Bank or simply PDB is your second source of information regarding the proteins. If you are working with protein structures, then you may want to look at the PDB or the Protein Data Bank. So to introduce you to the topic, let me briefly go into the background. If you are working with proteins and sequencing them, and, or if you are trying to retrieve the sequences, then Uniprot will be the database you will be working with. But if you are working on the structures of these proteins, then PDB will be the database you should be interested in. So to understand the extraction of the protein structures, you need to know that the structures of these proteins are 3D or three-dimensional. So these three-dimensional objects are made using different experimental techniques. These techniques may include atomic force microscopy, X-ray crystallography, or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. We'll go into the details of these three techniques separately, but for now you should just know that if you have a protein that has a 3D structure, then you can uh, study its structure by using some experimental methods. So once your experimental method has been applied to study the structure, the output from that experiment is a list of the coordinates of each atom within the big protein. And this information is stored in Protein Data Bank or simply the PDB. PDB is open, that is, uh, it is available for public and it is free of cost. So you can not only view the proteins there, you can also download the PDB files which describe specific proteins. So let's see how the PDB portal looks like. So if you go to rscb.org, then you will be taken to this web page. So here, as you can see, Protein Data Bank, PDB. So this is where you would want to start looking for protein structures. Here, you can search by PDB ID, author, macromolecule, sequence, or ligand amongst other attributes that are necessary to find the protein of your choice. So once you arrive on this portal, you can also deposit the new sequence that you may have obtained from your experimental protocol. So the new structure that you get will then be made public and will be available after verification. You can also search new structures, you can visualize them and you can analyze them as well. If you want to download for offline study of structures, you can do that by the download button. Now I'll give you an example of a protein that I searched using this PDB. So I simply input the human ubiquitin. So I got this ID. And then this was where I was taken to. So as you can see, so it's a solid state NMR structure of ubiquitin. So this ubiquitin structure has been obtained using NMR, which is a very high resolution technique for studying the structure of proteins and the publication or the paper in which this structure was reported is also shown here along with the display files, the download files given on this side. So if you click on the details then you can arrive at this page and here you can play with your protein. You can look at its 3D shapes and forms by rotating it around to specifically see which portion of the protein you are interested in. You can also download the display files or the PDB files and if you download those files so you will arrive on this file in which each atom, its position, its residue and the X, Y and Z coordinates are given here. So this information is very useful to visualize the proteins of your interest. 
So if you are interested in studying the protein structures, then PDB will be your go-to website. Of course, this is just an introduction to the PDB and you can explore into the PDB by going to the RSCB website. This information contains about 50,000 proteins, actually more than 50,000 proteins now, and the database is still growing in number as new and new newer structures are being added to the database.